Hello guys, this will be another video improving on my previous video. So a few days ago, I've published the moving logic to action or service class video from the controller. And you pointed a few things and I actually started enjoying your comments, those comments who improve on my content. So point my mistakes or point something that you would do better or differently, point something that I didn't think about. And a few of those comments were about service class that I should have gone one step further and make it better. So let's do in this video. So the original task was this controller. Let me open it up. So what I was doing this video, for those who haven't seen, I had an API controller and my goal was to make it a shorter controller and move all that logic of storing the data into some kind of separate class, which I've chosen action or service. So in that video, I've shown both options, but in this video, let's stick to the service. And this is the result. So there is a service which contains majority of that logic and the controller then is much shorter. It's just calling the service method and then return something based on the result. But there are a few things kind of wrong or maybe not ideal in the service method. Can you notice them? They are both actually in this abort if statement. Let's discuss one by one. And generally, what is the best scenario for the service class and service methods? How should they act? Let's discuss. So generally service class and service methods are kind of like black box where you input some parameters, they do some job and they return the result. So the point of any service class or any kind of separate class, it's kind of like a calculator. So you input some request values and you get the result and then you do what you want with the result in the controller. So you could compare that with like factory machine of some kind where you input some details, some stuff into that. And then on the other side, you get the result. Or if something goes wrong, then the machine usually just stops, shows the error, and then the mechanic or whoever is in control of that factory goes and makes the decision what to do, whether to continue or something like that. So this violates my code, violates that mechanic principle with two things. First, Abortion should not happen in the service. Service should not be responsible for what is outputted to the user. So the controller is called controller for a reason. It needs to control the output. It needs to return the response and not offload the response to any internal class like service, for example. So instead, what service should do is throw an exception. And then that exception may be caught in the controller or may be caught in general exception handler of Laravel. So let's do exactly that. So instead of abort if, we do if, that condition, that condition, then we throw exception, just general exception, throw new exception probably, like this, with the message of this. So this would be just a general exception without any more details. And then we need to catch that exception in the voice controller. So we do try catch here. So try to store that voice. It actually doesn't matter what that service does in this video. If you haven't seen previous video, just don't pay attention. It's just a service to process some data. Catch exception, just global exception. And then based on that exception, you can do whatever you want. So in here, in the controller, you can do abort 500 with exception get message like this. So the controller should control the flow and the service should just throw an exception. Another way of dealing with exceptions is a file called handler in app exceptions handler and I have a separate video I will link in the description below how to do that. So basically in the register you do renderable, not reportable, renderable of some exception. It may be your custom exception, it may be general Laravel exception like model not found or something, and then you return whatever you want for any exception that happens in any place in your Laravel project. So you can do that globally in Laravel exception handler or in your particular controller you can do something like this.
So that's my first overall message. Service or any internal class that you call from the controller should not be responsible for returning the result. It may just throw an exception, but it should not take over the control. It should not become the controller because the controller is there for a reason. And thing number two, which I dislike, which is kind of okay in some cases, but in most of the cases it isn't, is this part. So service is taking the global variable from the global session from the global authenticated user. And that is kind of wrong because the purpose of the service is to not know anything about the whole Laravel project, the global variables, the auth, the session, everything like that. So imagine in the factory, again, if we go back to the analogy of factory machine, the machine doesn't know about other machines in other rooms, maybe about other systems. So it just works with the input that it got and then gets the output, gives the output. So it doesn't know about anything globally, usually. Again, there are exceptions, but general rule of thumb is that service is a black box that doesn't know about any other black boxes. That's why instead of doing auth ID, we should pass that as a parameter. And another reason for that is, for example, that service could be called in the future, not from the session, not from the controller. And that is actually one of the reasons to have service to be reusable. So you may call that in some kind of automated test. Maybe you will create an artisan command in the future, maybe some kind of a job, something like that, where you would like to store the voice for not logged in user specifically, but for some other user. User. So for stuff like that, it's a better practice to have user ID here and replace auth ID with user ID here and then pass auth ID from the controller auth ID here. So it's a better practice to have that all in parameters. So service class service method wouldn't know anything about any global variables, anything from other services or if they are connected somehow, I'm just checking, yep, yeah, no other user ID. If they are connected somehow to other services or other classes, those should be also type hinted here as a parameter or some kind of uh, calling the other service from inside, that is cool. But to take that global variable like I did now with auth ID, it's not a bad practice, but it's kind of, um, not sure what's the best word, smelly code because it's not really what services are about. Services are, again, black boxes or factory machines that don't know anything about what happens before or after them. So these are my quick two tips about services in general. Do you agree or disagree? What else would you improve in this code maybe? Because again, I will repeat, I started liking your comments that improve on my code because I'm not an ideal person and I miss something. So sometimes actually I want to point out one of the things for my video and I totally missed some other points which are not related to my main thought, but also important. So these correction videos are to fill that gaps and maybe provide some more thoughts, train of thoughts for you to think about how to structure your code. If you want more videos like this one, subscribe to the channel because I keep shooting daily videos for half a year now already since the beginning of 2021 and see you guys in other videos.